So we have Matthew Burns over here, player one with 27 points so far today. He's playing the Ruby Amethyst deck. And then Brennan DeCandio, like you said, with 27 points on the Sapphire Steel deck. And we have um, both players have already taken turn one, I think. We have Popsicle, of course, is like the perfect opening for a Sapphire Steel deck. And nothing here yet on Matthew's side. Yeah, you know, Matthew can take his time and develop. He doesn't have to come roaring out of the gates in this matchup too much because it's more about his two drops and his three drops in this matchup that are better. Flynn Ryder and Sisu on turn three are the real, real winners for him. Absolutely. Uh, Flynn Ryder can get a lot of lore early because Brenna does not do a great job of checking that early in the game. And then if you get Sisu out, it is something that Brennan has a very hard time trading into one for one in the matchup. It, it creates a problem with, you know, it having too much strength and having four willpower can be a lot of a problem. So uh, turn two, really important for both of them. We're over on Brennan's side. You know, does he have one jump ahead here? Or is this one of the slower draws where he's going to be relying on Quill? That's the big answer. Yeah, and it is that one jump ahead, like you said, which that is a song, which he uses ink to play and adds another card into his ink well. It's exerted, of course, so he can't play another character or anything this turn, but really helping with that ramp. So uh, that's what Blue Steel is known for. The Sapphire decks all can ramp and build up that ink well very quickly. And speaking of Flood Rider, we see two of them here. Two. One of the ink well, one. One, <laughs> yeah, one played for Matt Burns in here. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. So the fact that... You know, Brennan can play, say, like, Haversome here, and, like, that's a very powerful play for him, right? To draw two cards, but immediately Flynn's going to go and get three lore, possibly quest into another one, and that's a lot off of a two-drop. So, uh, you know, Brennan, coming off of a top eight in Chicago, played this deck very famously there, did really well with it. He's actually changed up his list a little bit coming into this. Uh, one of the biggest changes was he went up to four copies of the card, but boom. Mm. And this is a card, in general, that he's, like, kind of targeting, besides, obviously, you know, Bucky and Diablo and things like that. Things like Flynn Rider are a problem for this deck, especially on the draw. I just wanted to have more early things to deal with. Speaking of really good draws, there's the Haversum getting put. Yeah, put in the inkwell. What do you think about that instead of seeing it played down on the board? You know what? I kind of like it in this matchup. Haversum is a very powerful card, but it's, it's real power is when it starts to quest as well. It gets the mm -hmm. two cards when it comes to play, and then you quest it. Um, you don't know if Brennan's going to have a second way to uh, quest here because, you know, yeah, he might use the Popsicle, but he might not want to get rid of the Fishbone Quill. The other problem is this. The uh, the decks have four copies of Brawl in this matchup, and that yes. is the only card in your deck that Brawl <laughs> can hit. So if you never put a Haversome to play, they never have a target for Brawl. And so that's pretty awesome for you if you can kind of like strand that card in their hand or not give them a good target. Yeah, which he doesn't. it doesn't look like Matthew has Brawl in his hand, um, but he does have that Sisu, which that Flynn Sisu... You know, turn two, turn three is like the perfect line of play that a Ruby Amethyst player wants to see. Of course, that Sisu gaining one strength for every card in your opponent's hand. So at this point, you know, early in the game, most players do have a pretty full hand. Another problem for Haversum here as well. You know, you're, you're drawing two cards when it gets played. You're drawing two cards when it gets exerted. So when you exert it, yeah, you'll draw two cards, but they will immediately turn Sisu mm -hmm. into a challenge. Yes. And you're going to have enough cards for it to take down. For it to that take down Flavisham. Yes. But man, okay, this is, <laughs> seeing Tinkerbell come down already is pretty amazing. Again, the power of that ramp, you know, Tinkerbell is a six cost card. The fact that Brennan was able to play it this soon what do you think about this Tinkerbell? <laughs> One of the best cards in the entire game. Tinkerbell, I, I know, uh, I've, I've heard stories because I wasn't around, <laughs> but in sets one and two, this might have been the most powerful card. Or I one of the most think cards it was really popular. And, and we're starting to see the power of it here because not only is it putting damage on your opposing characters, but the threat of it ever getting to challenge a character and then take out another character because it's normally going to be able to do that in this matchup yeah. is huge. Not only that, here's the thing. Anytime Brennan gets a five or six cost character into play, you always worry about his next turn because that's when this deck really, really starts to sing. Yes. I think it's the right way to yes. put it here. Because anytime, <laughs> the, anytime these get to sing something like Along Came Zeus, A Whole New World or anything like that, Brennan's going to start to pull far ahead because he's got such an ink advantage that he's going to start to really be able to leverage that. So you're seeing you know, Matthew having one of the ideal starts. You're a Flynn Rider into Sisu, but he's probably not as far ahead as you would hope to be in a matchup where you have your ideal start. Yeah, and Brennan does have a couple of really strong uh, song cards in his hand. He has both A Whole New World and Grab You Swords. Um, so it looks like he has quite a few options here. He has the Tinkerbell as well. So, um, you know, Matthew, of course, doesn't know that those songs are hiding in his hand. But what do you think, Brennan, knowing what he knows, what do you think he's hoping to not see on Matthew's side? Yeah, I don't know if there's a single card he's hoping not to see here. In fact, I think he's actually hoping that 
Uh, Matthew doesn't do too much here or play too many cards because it looks like he's setting up a whole new world for the next turn. He put the Hercules into play in bodyguard mode here, which is pretty yes. good. It's going to make sure that Tinkerbell stays around. He's going to have a, a character here to possibly sing the whole new world because that's when you get the real strength of the card is you're not actually paying ink for it. You're getting just to tap one of your characters yes. and stuff as well because you actually saw him take the Tinkerbell and attack into the castle here. That's a problematic card as well in this matchup. So like I said, this is one of the nightmare starts from, from Matthew Burnside <laughs> for Decandio, and he's actually in a pretty good position from here. Yeah, that Queen's Castle is such a strong card. Um, I've seen it help players win games. Um, so Brennan really trying to take care of it quickly is going to be uh, really important, I think. Yeah, and Matthew has to be kind of conscious here, too. He needs to make sure that his next turn isn't going to be, that Brennan's next turn is going to be bad for him. He has to start worrying about something like a whole new world. He has to worry about draw your sword. He has to worry about a second copy of Tinkerbell yeah. and making sure none of that happens too badly for him here. The other problem here is, don't forget, that Hercules has resist one here, so there's not a lot of really, really good attacks from here because Brennan got a bunch of cards out of his hand so that Sisu now only has two strength. Yeah, uh, so that's two strength. And he does have a fox that came down, but again, because that resist, what do you think uh, Matthew's best line is here? So I'm wondering if you're supposed to start to challenge some of your cards into this. I don't think you do. I think what Matthew's doing is probably what is best for him here and just get a bunch of your characters into play here Use your ink in your hand as much as you can because it's likely you're getting a whole, a whole new, world new world. In. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, if, if that does happen, uh, those two be prepared are going to go into the discard. Yeah, this is really important. I'm glad you pointed that out. That's two copies of two. Be Prepared here, and that's two <laughs> of the most powerful cards that Matthew has in this matchup because yes. it's his only reset button. You know, we talked about it just now that sometimes his challenges aren't as good in this matchup because the, the characters are so big on Brennan's side. And... He needs to be able to keep the board as clear as possible because if Brennan starts to amass too much of one, he's never going to keep up in value and rate. Yeah, and, you know, some players will run four be prepared, but some only three. So, uh, you know, by losing those two with Whole New World, uh, besides that, you know, what are the answers do you think that Matthew's looking for on his side? Oh, a couple more foxes. and he, uh, So here's the thing. Matthew's behind drastically here you know he's starting to fall behind on the board in size he's going to start to fall behind in lore very soon once brendan decides to turn the corner and start mm -hmm. you know actually generating lore uh, the thing that he needs to do here is start to develop a board as much as possible from here the problem is he's at such an ink disadvantage that brendan's going to be able to keep pushing the uh forward with his stuff and then maybe you know play a whole new world again he's never going to run out of gas so matthew has to be as efficient as possible with his cards here mm -hmm while developing a better position on the board and developing as much lore as possible because he needs to start making Brennan have to make tough choices here. Yeah. He does have a brawl, which he decides to ink. He has another Queen's Castle, which I wonder if we'll see. Um, but those, man, those two Tinkerbells on Brennan's side of the board are going to be, and that, you can't, you can't even, you know, do anything about them because of that bodyguard that's out there. Yeah, maybe Matthew needs to start finding his copies of uh, King Undisputed. The, mm. the problem is there's the Hercules there protecting the Tinkerbells. You start getting them off the board. You start getting through these things as much as possible so your characters are free to quest. That is the biggest squeeze that he's in right now, is if he ever starts questing, he runs the risk of losing not one, but multiple characters to single challenges from Brennan. Yeah. And he does play, play a rabbit here to draw a card. He got a friends, which, you know, to help him dig through his deck and find some more answers, which he does use Madame Mim Fox to sing. Uh, he got a goat and a snake. Uh, not maybe the answers he was looking for. <laughs> and yeah, you're seeing how Brennan's leveraging his deck into making this a more palatable matchup than it generally is. And sometimes I know that when I first started playing this matchup, I did not win a lot at all on the Blue Steel side. I lost a lot. What he's doing is, is he's setting the terms of combat here. Yeah. And he's making Matthew have to play a game that he doesn't want to where, hey, look, you're going to need to challenge my characters to get out of this here. And Matthew's characters don't challenge well into this board. Yeah. Yeah, the, even the characters that he has, they can't really do much damage at all to what Brennan has out on the board. And because of that Hercules out, that Flynn that's sitting there isn't doing anything for him. Yeah, exactly. That Flynn is pretty much a dead card here at this point. And... You're seeing Brennan really start to turn the corner here. And I've got to believe, so this is a Tamatoa here. This is how Brennan's going to win the game very quickly. This, plus if he ever has a lucky yes. dime, is going to gain 10 to 12 lore in a turn, depending on how many items he has. 
I don't know if Britain would play this this early in the game. I know I say early. It's, it's a little bit of like <laughs> this early in the game because this generally goes really long. I don't know if you'd play this this early if those two be prepared hadn't been discarded, discarded. earlier for the whole new world because there's a chance that, that Matthew, I mean, look, he's got a ton of cards in his hand, but the, the odds the of him odds, having them are absolutely. a lot lower. Yeah, Brendan saw those two be prepared go into the discard, and so he probably felt very safe putting that Tomatoa out there. Yeah, you can see you go ahead and start to lure up here. For, I think it was a lure for five, six here total that turn. Yeah, and that Tomatoa right now, of course, he quests for one on his own, but then he gets an extra three lore for those other items that he has out. So he, Tomatoa is questing for four, and then both Tinkerbell and Hercules are all questing for two. So there's a lot of lore. And Brennan, you know, in lore was quite behind uh, Matthew, but, we, you know, this this deck turns can turn very quickly, and we can see now he's that's six, ten lore that he's going to get next turn. <laughs> yeah, you're never actually too far ahead of the Blue Steel deck when it comes to lore because of the, because of T uh, Tamatoa and because of Lucky Dime. They can do... Yeah unreal things they i've seen people go from zero to 14 in one turn and then threaten to you know to have too much lore threaten to go over 20 on the turn after that from actual zero yes and then you have to keep matthew as well on a certain turn uh, a certain amount you have to keep him below say like 15 16 17 going into the last turns because they can do some really cool things with goat and bouncing goat once they've developed enough ink and you're drawing a lot of extra cards from the game so they can set that hand up so that's what matthew's trying to find here he's either I, I think the ship has sailed on trying to get control of the board back without finding one of his be prepared. So you see the, you know, the king card here taking out yep. one of the characters from Brennan. But I think at this point, I guess you just have to try to race in lore. The problem is that Tamato is going to make that really difficult. Really difficult, yeah. And of course, that B king undisputed lets Brennan pick which card he's going to banish, and he chose one of his two Tinker Bells that he had out. So he said, yeah. This, this, the second one is extra. The first second, one, yes. <laughs> the, the threat of the first one is enough. Keeping the bodyguard around is really important, and yes. you don't want to get rid of Tamatoa here because of the power of it, of it, you know, questing for four, five, six every single turn. And all right, here's the start of this for Matthew. He's going to have to start attacking into this Hercules, and look, it's not great. This is what I was talking about earlier. You need at least two attacks into Hercules to take care of this. Yep, which then, he does. Yeah, he trades and, both of his mims, the fox and the snake. And now you're not a, a, a left over with enough strength that's capable of challenging. You're starting to take care of the Tinkerbell, and you can't even quest with some of your other cards either for fear of Tinkerbell taking out multiple cards. So this is what I like to call the squeeze from the Sapphire deck. You're in a spot that's not great for you. Yeah, what do you... I mean, I feel like Brennan's still got to be feeling pretty good at this point. He still has the Tomatoa. He does it with a bunch of items. He still has one of his Tinkerbells. Like, I don't... How do you think he's feeling right now? I think he's feeling like he can't possibly lose this game from this point. <laughs> he's got a whole new world of hand, another Tamatoa. Another Tamatoa. If something happens to the first one. <laughs> and he's got to grab your swords here just in case Matthew decides, look, I've got to try to race on lore. I'm going to go wide, play, you know, three or four characters turn. And then Brennan's waiting in the wings to just take care and sweep all that up. It's going to take some monumental heroic stuff for Matthew to get back into the game from this point, even though he's technically leading in lore right now. Yeah, the lead is not by much, though, because we've seen Brennan really pick up the pace, he's stepping on the gas. Uh, we see him here doing, you know, questing with Tamatoa, and now he is up to 10 lore. And, yeah, it's really tipping the... The scales have tipped the other direction very quickly. Yeah, he's getting to do... And here we go. He's going ah, to grab your swords. Grab your swords. Gonna, yeah, yep. this is going to go ahead and just take care of everything, actually, from Matthew Burns' side of the board. And we can see Brennan doing one of my favorite things with Tamatoa here. If you get to have it in play multiple turns, even if you don't have a ton of items in play, if you have something like Popsicle in play, you can... Sacrifice the popsicle anytime you want, even if you're not getting value off of it, which there's sometimes you can. You can get some defense, uh, some some damage off of some of these characters, mm -hmm. but it puts it into the discard pile, and then you quest the Tomto. Yeah, you lose one lore, but you get it back, and then you get to draw another card, so you keep the gas going. Yeah. And, you know, we're just looking for Lucky Dime here at this point, even though Brennan doesn't really need it to win from here. It would seal the game immediately. Yeah, uh, if he keeps both Tomato and Tinkerbell, if nothing changes about this board day, he'll quest for... Uh, seven next turn and so then at this point the game would be over in two turns unless Matthew can find something here <laughs> but the, yeah I'm not sure besides that be prepared there's really not much yeah it's just be prepared the fact that one character was left over besides the Tamatoa is you could tell Brennan was very much trying to do that he was trying to make sure that two characters stay on the board in fact uh, he doesn't have it in his list, but this is one of the reasons that some people play the Mickey Mouse version uh, of yes, this. The so, they have, yeah, yes. so they have, yeah, so they have a leftover character sitting around to yep. to give up 
for be king undisputed. Yep. Um, and I think that he just, uh, Matthew played the rabbit. I think he just drew another Flynn off of the rabbit. So not the answers he was hoping you got a for. feel for Matt here. Uh, his opener was really good for yes. this matchup in particular, and it just wasn't enough. So this is one of those games, you just got to tip your, your cap to your opponent where, look, mm -hmm. you did what you're supposed to do. You played fine. You drew well, but like your opponent's hand just, uh, it had what it needed to beat you from here. Yeah. And, and that whole new world really I mean, that was the turning point in the game was when Brendan played that whole new world. It was really a whole new world <laughs> yeah, for was both all, of them. Yeah, it was a game that looked like it was in a good spot for Matthew. And then Brendan's like, no, we're actually in my world. You're, yes. you're just allowed to be here. Yes. it's And now it's all shiny, shimmering splendor over here on Brennan's side with that Tamatoa. And uh, is that another whole new world? That is a whole, another whole new world. Wow. I think so. The extra cards don't matter. Here, uh, you know, Brennan's so far ahead that he doesn't mind giving Matthew Burns extra cards, but he's just maybe trying to find a way to ah. lethal this turn, which he did. Lethal and dime he with found, Amazon. He found the lucky dime, and there it is. Yeah. And speaking of ink and how much Brennan has this turn, I want to talk about the card that he had face up in his ink well there while we're yeah. waiting for the next one. It's Argus. So it's just a... So it looks like both players have already altered their opening hands, and they're just getting ready to start. I believe Brennan was on the play last time. So Matthew's going to start us out. That's huge here as well. Uh, Matthew being on the play this game, and this is one of the better ones to start off with, Turnbox followers. Um, I love this card. This is a really good litmus test for how much you understand your matchups. And it's just such a great card because, look, if Brennan doesn't have a lot of answers early, this is going to get a ton of lore in. And then the turn you need it, it's going to, you know, change in for a card. But also, if your hand doesn't work out, right? You know, if you've rearranged your hand, you're missing your two-drop. You're missing your three-drop. I just need another inkable. You can go ahead and quest for this and change it into a card. I think this is one of the best one-drops the entire game. I think this is just a very well-rounded, well-designed card that does so many little things that you don't yes. necessarily notice in the game. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it again and again today that turn one, Ruby Amethyst puts down Chernabog's followers. Um, he's questing, and of course, this card has the ability where when you quest, you can choose to banish it, but you don't have to to draw a card. And because... There's no threats on the board here on Brennan's side. Uh, Matthew's just questing and leaving it there on the board, so he gets to choose um, when he wants to banish it. Yeah, not having a Flynn Rider here is is huge for yeah, Brennan. Yeah, I see the Sisu in yeah. his hand, but there was no Flynn. Yeah, that's that's huge for Brennan. That takes a lot of pressure off of him because the Flynn would have gotten at least three to four lower this game, if not more. Plus, you've got the Chernobyl's followers starting early. Then we're gonna have the Sisu behind this. He would have been really far behind very very, very early in this game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and just the Popsicle and the Ford of Sphere so far on Brennan's side. We didn't see that one jump ahead like we saw last time to help build up his ink well. Uh, what do you think Brennan's looking for? So, so here's the thing. I, both of his inks cards are the same one. They're both quills. Yeah. I have to believe there's a third quill. A third in Brennan's quill. Yeah, yeah, there's no way <laughs> that we don't have a third quill here when you don't have a one jump ahead and you're already inking them. So... I think uh, there is. Yep. Look at that. He has two more in his hand. So he just has all four? He has all four nice. quills. He's going to ink the <laughs> other one and then... Play. So is this triple wow. ink of a fish bone quill into... <laughs> oh, there we go. Ever the show. Yeah. <laughs> four of a kind dealer. What do I win? Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine having an opening hand? Like having uh, starting Yeah, he probably the game. kept one and then, you know, and drew, then drew three more. And then drew three of them. Yeah. Yes, I've had games like that before. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it, you should know it, too. If your opponent is ever in a... In a, in a uh, it is something like a blue steel deck. If they're if they're ever putting down their quills face up and turn one or two, and especially if they don't one jump yes. ahead, there's more behind there's more. this. There's yeah. more coming. Yeah. yeah, any of those cards that are like powerhouse cards and you see it go into the ink well on the turn that it could be played, you know, there's another one in their hand. So we got a little distracted <laughs> by the, the four of here. Uh, that's the answer to your question, by the way. What does Brennan need here coming right. into turn three? Is he needed he's a fishbone fish quill. quill. And, and he, he had, had four of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, which, again, for the Sapphire Steel, that's what you want to see. You want to be able to ramp, get up to those high-cost cards as quickly as possible, um, especially, I think, in this matchup to Ruby Amethyst. Oh, absolutely. Uh, one thing that's going on here, so Matthew Burns' hand is actually pretty good to play out this game. You know, he's got the Turbox Dollars, he's got the Sisu, but he has a lot of the uh, tricksy stuff that I'm yes. talking about, kind of like the mid-range fight here. You know, he's going to draw some extra cards here, maybe get some value of playing cards a second time by picking them up with the mana mims. He also has a Be Prepared in his hand, I believe. I think I caught a sight of that earlier. The thing about this is, in this matchup, when you have something like Be Prepared in your opening hand, that's actually not the best place right. to have it. Yeah. yeah, you don't want it on turn one. You want it, like, on turn five or six, so but, it's well, not sitting there. Yeah, the other thing, too, is, though, is, like, you can't always count on having it for your turn seven because you are only playing it 
on turn seven, the earliest things possible. You know, Brennan, if he, let's say he could have that card, his deck would play a lot sooner because he's usually going to have the, the ink advantage. Yes. But also, he's most likely to have played a whole new world before, before you get to then. turn seven. Yes, that's so, absolutely true. And we, and which is exactly what we saw last game where Matthew had the be prepared. He had two of them, but he wasn't able to hold on to them um, when he had seven ink because Brennan played a whole new world. I think, though, it looks like it might be Bee King Undisputed in over in Matthew's hand, which is a, a good one for him to have. Yeah, it's a really good one. He could definitely navigate oh, some board states. There we go. There we go. <laughs> he could have. He could definitely navigate some board states to where uh, Bee King Undisputed get the exact character you want to. Because mm -hmm. the way this game plays out, uh, a lot of times it's not like the one we saw in game one, where there's a bunch of characters left over. Generally, it's one, you have to sing, and then he can trade in with, like, a fox and a couple other things or one other thing maybe, and then, you know, kind of make the choice for Brennan. Like, yes. It says yes. choose, but he doesn't but it, actually get to choose. he doesn't actually choose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so, like, that's that's one thing you're seeing here. Uh, Five-drop beast. N not amazing this matchup, right? You're not destroying an item ever, obviously, but it is something that can sing all of your songs. Yep. It is uh, big enough to trade with Practically everything from Matthew Burns, which is which is great. Also, it's Bee King Undisputed uh, fodder that we've talked about here yes. that protects the more important characters down the road. So this is one that, yeah, usually you're inking it more in this matchup, but it's fine to play this early enough just so you can set up those huge turns like we've seen where you mm -hmm. sing Whole New World and do some stuff. And There's Bee King Undisputed. <laughs> I, you know what? I like this from Matthew. Like he, he saw that in game one, it got out of hand when Brennan got multiple characters into play. Let's yeah. make sure that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. happen. Yeah. Yeah. And especially because it was just that one character on board, he knew that was going to be that was going to be the one that that's going to go. The other I don't great if, thing I don't know if Beast could ever actually could he actually be king if, you know, there were lions around. I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean, he is king of the castle. You yeah, know? but he's he's king of a castle. <laughs> the lions are king of everything the light touches. Fair so enough. that's so much yes. more than a castle. It's but, true. Yes. Plus, Matthew has Castle in his deck, so there's, like, that thing, too. Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> King Undisputed. Now, Brennan, he has the Tomatoa in hand. He also has a Cogsworth, I see. He's got some good stuff over there. Um, but we have yet to see, besides that beast, uh, a character come out and stick. What do you think he's hoping to do here? He needs to get a character to stick for a turn. And, yeah. you know, that's another reason why you saw Matthew get really aggressive with the Bee King Undisputed is if you can keep Brennan from singing Whole New World, from singing Grab Your Swords, or even from singing, you know, Zeus, like just yeah. any of the cards that cost, you know, four or five, those are the turns where Brennan starts to pull ahead. Because he could ever, you know, sing plus play a character that's really powerful. Yeah. If you, you know, if you grab your swords plus Tinkerbell, that is devastating. Usually kills everything in Matt Burns' deck besides maybe Sisu. And that's the kind of turns he's really trying to avoid. And it feels like, you know, we could see the cards, obviously, but it feels like Bryn is trying to set something up like that. He's yeah. trying to set up, you know, singing one, one of his characters. And that's what this deck wants to do. So if you're not always doing the best thing your deck can do, if you can stop your opponent from doing what they're about to do, that might be better. Better, yeah. And we do see that Cogsworth come down, which is a, a fun card. Uh, he has Ward, which everyone is just, you know, gets really frustrated with that Ward. Um, but he has a, another fun ability where he gives Resist 1 to all your other characters. What are your thoughts about so, Cogsworth? So Resist is a great ability. It's super powerful. This deck utilizes it almost never. <laughs> like, it, like, almost <laughs> never comes up. You're, you're not into combat too much. Cogsworth usually sings, which... I don't know if Cogsworth has a great voice. I don't think it's a song I'd want to hear. You know, he doesn't. Uh, he, you know, he he dances a little bit in Be Our Guest, but he sure. doesn't sing too much. Yeah, he's more of a uh, <laughs> he's more of a background dancer, a background yes, singer. Yes. Yeah, it'd be like if I were to ask to sing, you do not want me no. on the main <laughs> mic, please. Nobody wants that. You're not going to sing. Be prepared for us today. Absolutely not. All right. But he has gotten that character to stick. So now he has a character that can sing. Like you said, Cogsworth is uh, yep. often used and for singing. Yeah, I I love starting with Popsicle here for multiple reasons. That's the first thing you want to do. Oh, okay. oh did he I just say, double, double grab sing, your swords. Grab your swords? Well, he, oh, uh, my goodness. Yeah, he sang one and, 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 played, <laughs> and played the other. Yeah. So I was going to say, I love starting with Popsicle here because if you have grab your swords and if he were to draw into exactly Tinkerbell there, he could mm -hmm. take over the entire side of the board from his opponent. But hey, second grab your swords. Does pretty that's, much the same that's thing. That's the same thing. Yeah, that was, um, I mean, double grab your swords, took care of everything on Matthew's side of the board. He had those Sisus that were out. He had that fox. I mean, 
Matthew's got to be feeling pretty bummed out right now. Yeah, and so here's the thing. Matthew's bummed out, but he is at a 12-0 to lore uh, range. I, yes. I am big on saying that ah. this doesn't always tell you <laughs> Uh, who, and look, there's another B King on his speed, so it actually answers the Cogworks. So you see the brawl stranded in his hand. This is something I talked about coming into this matchup. You can get into some spots where, and you see him inking the brawl here, like, I only have one target for this yeah. card. Like, it's going to be dead in my hand. The thing is, he actually has a decent lead in uh. lore here, and he can start to get to this point where he has seven, eight, nine, eight, where he start having turns where he plays two or three characters, gets a lot of advantage, and can maybe keep up with Brennan from here. Yeah. Brennan hasn't really pushed his advantage too much from this spot, but hopefully this Brave New World will give him a better chance of doing that. Yeah. Uh, one thing I will note is that, you know, Cogsworth, who is down on the board, has Ward, so you can't choose that character for anything. But the great thing about Be King Undisputed is that it says your opponent chooses. You don't. And so it kind of gets around Ward. Also, I want to point out, Brennan uh, used Haversum for ink here this turn, mm -hmm. and this shows an understanding from both the players. We saw Brawls getting inked and Haversum getting inked, where yes. it's like, look, we know where this cards go in the matchup, and <laughs> yeah, they're, they're fine a lot of times, but this is where they're normally going to. And yeah, that's a bell from uh, Brennan as well here. And I think that he's sitting at, is he at 10 ink now? He is at 10 ink, which means that Bell, she's strange but special and... Uh, Quest for five. When you know, you <laughs> I may have got a little too hasty with the brawl talk because, you know. There was another one. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, it's, he added bells literally last night or like the day before. <laughs> he usually never plays this card. This was not in his version from uh, from Chicago. So sorry that I said that a little bit. But I, in general, that's kind of how this matchup plays out is what I was trying yeah. to say. Yeah, those brawls are so, so powerful. And yeah, he put one. I, I wonder how much he he put it in the inkwell kind of as a decoy. <laughs> That's actually a really good point. Uh, honestly, you know, with us, you know, putting your ink face up, it's very telling if you pay attention to what your opponent's inking, you can get some information about their hand. Absolutely. About the full range of what they can possibly do, what they're thinking, what's likely to happen here. Uh, and look, Matt's actually starting to get to the point here where he's starting to actually get in a spot where Brennan needs to start answering this. This Maleficent, you know, got a card. That's fine. But Flynn Rider is a card that is very scary. It is. Yeah. And he only has a uh, two strength, um, but well, so now of course he's not going to get that three lore gain because we have the Tinkerbell and Cogsworth that came down, which both have more strength than Flynn. So unfortunately, Matthew won't get the lore off of frenemy Flynn there. And I wonder if this is going to be the be prepared turn for Matt. I think we saw it be prepared. There's, Speaking oh, of two of them in his hand now, he just drew another one. He's double prepared, and he's starting to the point where it, I don't I don't know if he has a one drop here as well or a two drop where he could ink play be prepared and do something and on the play a card. Yeah, that's the one thing with Ruby Amethyst is that you don't typically ever see them sing be prepared. Uh, there's not a character that they usually will sing it with. You're always using all your ink as soon as you get to turn seven. But if you can have uh, more ink and we do see that be prepared and you're able to get another character on the board before you pass it to your opponent uh, that really puts you in a good position especially being at the 14 to 0 point here like i actually do think that matt is not in a horrible spot here generally yeah. i yeah. actually don't care about the lower lead until it gets to really bad when, yeah. I'm, when I'm blue steel speaking of another also, whole new world and i think that means there's no be prepared left if i remember right because brennan was going through the discard pile for matthew burns and i think there were two in there already plus the one he just played plus the one he just discarded yeah so we'll have to see i think i caught that but matthew burns is about to get to the danger zone of lore if you're on the other side of the board for any deck where once they start to get to about 17 18 you run the risk of being uh, of losing the game to them not even having to quest. Yeah. But doing some kind of goat uh, shenanigans. tricks. Shenanigans. Yeah, goat sh <laughs> shenanigans is a better word for goats. Yeah. Goat shenanigans. Uh, I, I think I see a queen's castle in his hand, which might be an interesting card to put down. Another card that's great here. Brennan doesn't have a way to challenge that or kill it right away as far as what we know. Nothing on board can challenge it down. I know he does have a couple of Rise of the Titans mm -hmm. in his yeah. decks, but he has to have that card in the spot. Uh, that's another reason why you've seen some of the changes in the decks come out of the Blue Seal deck from Brennan and some of the other players is they've realized the problem cards, the ones that we've been talking about, the Sisus, yes. the Flynn the Riders, Flins and the Castle. And the Castle, yeah. I mean, Flynn, Sisu, Castle, those those are, are the ones. Now, it's interesting. Matthew's kind of counting up, his, I think, the cost of cards to see what can I put out here? Yeah. What can I play? So we're going to brawl on Flaversham. Um, that which, was a, uh, how much do I have left over after, after I have to I, play this brawl yes, that what, I have to play? What can I still yeah. get done? What can I still afford? Yeah. I was, okay, so that's 
that's the Flynn coming down, which that's an interesting because Cogsworth has more strength than Flynn. What are your thoughts here about him playing the Flynn in this position? I think this is just about being ink efficient at this point. He's getting enough stuff into play. Plus, you know, he lets him get the one drop plus the amount of mem into play and get things. Because here's the thing. He's at 14 lore. If he gets to a uh, quest of both of these, he goes up to 16. And we've talked about that. 16, 17, 18. These are the numbers where Brennan really has to worry. And you start to put the pressure on Brennan with... You want to put him in the spot where, hey, look, you don't just get to do whatever you want in your turn. You have to answer everything I'm doing for the rest of the game. Right, right. Yeah, so Matthew has really become the aggressor here, and Brandon has to have the answers. Yes, and eventually they will run out. You know, we've already seen multiple grab your swords. Mm -hmm. We've already seen some Tinkerbells. Sometimes all of their stuff doesn't line up perfectly in one turn. They do draw a ton of cards, and he has a ton of ink, but you can make them have to do these things, and sometimes they can't answer it correctly, and all you need is that small window. Yeah. Rebecca, you just need that one turn where he doesn't answer everything, and you're going to win from that spot. Absolutely. I mean, and he does have some good options, I think. And he has a lot of cards. He has that Argus there that could stop Flynn from gaining that three lore that you were talking about earlier. Um, and he just has so much ink, and he has a lot of options there in his hand. I'm trying to see what else he has. So I see Another a Cogsworth, Cogsworth I see Lucky a, Dime. I think I see multiple along came Zeus's, and mm -hmm. we're going to see how threatened Brennan really feels this turn. Yeah. I would be tempted to start firing off some of these along came Zeus's to keep the lore count as low as possible, but he also might... The thing is, that comes of opportunity cost. If you're using your ink to do that, then you're not developing your board, you're right. not doing more. The biggest problem that I've seen this game from Brennan is he hasn't found a Tamatoa yet. No Tamatoa, which... Yeah. And he has that lucky dime in hand, but yeah, no Tamatoa. Looks like he is going to... Looks like a quest up for two. Going to start the slow yes. climb up to even this game up. Second Cogsworth here. A double resist, and it does look like we're going to start picking away at some of Matthew Burns's board, and we're just getting as much lore to play as possible. And also, there's I think we talked Argus. about this. There, mm -hmm. we think there's no more be prepared. Oh, right, we think, Matthew's deck. but so, so Brennan, the, the, <laughs> the gates are open. You can play all the characters that you want. So here's what he kind of split the difference on what I was talking about. He, yeah. he kept the lore count low on his opponent's side, got rid of one of the better characters that could challenge if he wanted to do something like that, but also started to develop his own lore so that he could start catching back up because he is starting to get worried. You can tell in the way that turn was played yeah. that he's a little worried that he's getting to the point, and we can see why right here in the front of Matthew Burns' hand. This is why he needs to be a little bit worried. Yeah, yep. those goat shenanigans, and he does even have a snake in hand as well, which means he could start bouncing that goat back and forth, and when you're at, starting to get close to 20, which... He's and there's that goat. There's this, that goat. <laughs> this is the scary part. When they have this much ink, when Matthew Burns has this much ink and leads on goat, you know it's not going to stay in play. He's going to get two lore off this card, and yeah, there we go. Madam Mim, pick up, gain another lore here, and you know next turn this is likely to happen again. So that's two more lore this turn that you can't interact with in any way, and the next turn probably two more that you can't interact with anyway. So that means at this point, if anything starts to quest you're probably losing this game. So this went from a really power position on Brennan as, as early as a few turns ago to right. now I think the game is in Matthew Burns' hand and Brennan has to start answering everything. Yeah, and because he doesn't have anything exerted over on Matthew's side of the board, Brennan can't challenge. So he does have that other along came Zeus, um, but he needs to have some other way to answer what Matthew has on his side of the board. Absolutely, and the, the problem is I don't know if he's going to be able to cobble it all together here and We'll see, that's a, I think a fox just got picked up from Matthew here, too. So that's another way for him to bounce the goat. And that's exactly what he needed. That's what he needed, yeah, because he didn't have another Madame Mim in hand. And so putting that Maleficent down, he did ink a castle, um, but that extra card off of Maleficent was worth it. Yeah, and there was, a, there was a turn or two earlier here that I was wondering about the ink usage of Brennan used, where he played a bunch of different characters. And I was wondering if maybe at some point Lucky Dime should have hit the board. I don't know if he ever really had time for it, but mm. I think that's one of your outs is if you get a Lucky Dime to play as early as possible, it makes your first Tamatoa draw, possibly ending the game yeah. at, the, at the turn it happens. But I think he also saw the future of the fact that, look, I'm not going to have enough items in play for that to be a, a viable line for me. Yeah. I mean, knowing that Matthew has that goat in hand, Brendan has got to be sweating it right now because really, if he is able to bounce the goat... Uh, he, Brennan knows that Beth, Matthew could take the win on his next turn unless he does something pretty drastic here. Yeah, the odds of you losing next turn are not zero. They're, pretty, they're not they're, zero. They're pretty high. And that's <laughs> even if you answer everything on the board here, because Brennan, look, he's he's readjusting all of his ink. I, I believe, yeah. So 
Double the boom. Okay, ba-boom on Maleficent and the Flynn. So it takes care of these. He cannot let him quest. And That's the biggest thing. Yes, here. yeah, and yeah. he's going to sing, Along Came Zeus on, on the Snake. So, yeah, so even if you could bounce the goat, that's only two lore. That puts Matthew at 19. And so you've saved yourself one more turn to try to do something. Yeah, if you had left any characters in play, the game was going to end next turn. Now this at least buys you one turn unless something really crazy happens. Like, I don't know if you can go, like, goat, Bounce goat, play goat, play goat. Like if he draws a second goat, I don't know if he, I don't think he has enough ink for all of that. If he if he draws a snake here, he could do it because he could play. No, he couldn't. Do yeah, it. I think he's just short. No. Which, by uh, the way, drew the second goat. Oh, he did draw a second goat. Ah. So so this starts to set up, I think, an unlosable spot for Matthew Burns. I don't know if he can bounce it a second time though, because he has a fox. He doesn't have a snake. So th the thing is here though, the second yeah. copy allows him to put it in harm's way. He's fine with it being in play. So we'll see. Let's say. Ink does he have left? So he can go gain one here. That puts him up to 18. He's going to play Madame Mim. That's going to put him up to 19. So this means that Brennan now has to answer every single thing in... I, I, don't, I don't know if Brennan can win from here. He has to actually win the game. He can't prevent Matthew from winning the game. We have... Yeah, we have a lot of ink. If he can get... Um, <laughs> If he can get maybe a Tomatoa to put down. And that's that... super scary here. He actually just inked a copy of Goat. Oh. So that means that there's a plan that is probably deterministic from this point of winning the game. So at 19, and so in Britain's eyes, there's a chance that, look, there's no more Goats, right? Like we saw the Goat. He doesn't know uh, about the second copy. He doesn't copy. know about the second Goat. You're right. Yeah. yeah. And so if there's no Tamatoa here. There's no chance that he can win this turn, that he can get up to enough lore. And so I think Britain's going to have to start doing math here and a lot of it. What are the odds of me being able to play enough items, find a Tamatoa, mm -hmm. activate Lucky Dime to win? And yeah. I don't know if he has enough ink to do all of that, though starting off with a sphere, that's a good start. If he were to go like running spheres into popsicles into it, maybe he could find a way to get 12 lore this turn. Yeah, he has uh, six, yeah, six lore on the board right now, which would put him up to 14. Um, but, yeah, I don't know if yeah. he can win it this turn. Haversum draws two more cards. It draws a couple Tinkerbells. Now, look, this isn't bad here. The Tinkerbells uh, combined with something else can can beat the face-up thing that he knows here. He, he can right. start to clear the board from Madame Mim and Chernobyl's followers. If there's no goat in the other hand, mm -hmm. in Matthew's hand, then you're still okay for a turn, and then you could possibly win the next turn. The problem is we know that second we goat is looming. We know that second looming. goat, yes. Yeah, that... That I wonder if that was exactly why he put the goat in the inkwell was to to make Brennan feel like he was a little safe here. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing is, is like you know, it probably won't even matter in the long run. It doesn't really you know hide any information, other than the fact that you know, like if I see that, I would actually pretty much assume you have a second goat. But to see it, like a goat's just gonna do it, and yeah, you see yeah. never finding. Obviously, he goes into three cards down. I think was his first copy, and I think that's what he's talking about. Like, where are my Tamatoa? Where, where are they? Yeah, yes. where's, where's my big guy? Yeah, I, I need, I need that hero. And I need it to win. I need my Tamatoa. Then Tamatoa was a drab little crab on that game. He, 